All right, guys. I just want to get into a just um a, one thing. I just started a new league, and I'm about to play the week one match in not too long. Um, this is league which I am commissioning, uh, and this is a generation four based draft league. So heart gold, soul silver. Um, as you can tell, I've got like a decent bit of specifically the gen four mods. Um, and a bit more outside that. Um, this should be pretty fun. It's uh, I wound up picking the gen just because I've been enjoying a lot. I've been in a Gen Four OU tournament recently, where you know I'm doing pretty well. Haven't haven't lost yet, which is fine. But it's also double a limb, so I've been bringing some spicy stuff for the you know just uh, you, when you've got that first loss back up, why wouldn't you? That's pretty fun, but um, yeah, it's a uh, it's gonna be pretty interesting, I think. Um, there's a lot of just the having no team preview is a pretty big change to the game having um, this being back before hidden abilities means it's a lot less there's a lot less items which are around um, I don't think sticky web exists yet which is nice at least you know, as far as I'm concerned I don't generally like using sticky web but I don't generally like playing against it though uh, if we had into hidden abilities, uh, some of the Pokemon you might see there might appreciate Sticky Web being around for just a little bit of push. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to break through, break down my draft. Uh, my first overall pick I went with was Mamoswine, as you can see. I had the second last pick in the draft, and this being Gen 4, Obviously, there are a lot of Pokemon that are in the standard tier 1, tier 2, which are not around in Gen 4. So this team was, um, sorry, this uh, draft was 4 tiered. I made it myself, but I had input from a few other people. I think there are a few spots that maybe slip through the cracks that I should maybe um, put in different tiers. But I, I think it ultimately turned out pretty well, especially since uh, I benefited from uh, one of the uh, tier 4s being maybe a little bit low. Um... But yeah, I'll get to that in a second. So my first overall pick was Mamoswine. Because um, there were 10 picks before me. Basically everything which I had wanted was gone. Um, just all of it. I think in the end, the tier 1 I think had more Pokemon than a standard tier 1 does. but Or a similar amount. But there were very few Pokemon left. Um, like if I pull up the dock on my phone now. I think if we look at the entire dock, and um, we consider that the way that I did it was um, tier 1, 2 tier 2s, 2 tier 3s, a tier 4, and, and 10 free points. So obviously 4 points for a tier 1, 3 points for a tier 2, 2 points for a tier 3, 1 point for a tier uh, 4. Um, that means that a lot of people were getting uh, like 2 tier 1s and 2 tier 4s, so like you have... Uh, just a lot of tier 1s going. Ultimately, I think at the end of the draft, the only tier 1s which were left were Weavile, Snorlax, Shaman, Staraptor, and Clefable. Which I think part of that just comes down to how many good... Um, ha how resistant people were to taking Ice types with Weavile, I think, specifically. And how many good normal types there were with uh, Clefable, Staraptor, and Snorlax. There were a lot of really strong normal types this generation. And... Normal is a pretty decent check to a lot of things, especially defensive, and there are a lot of good offensive normal types. I'm not entirely sure why Shaman didn't go, but that's fine. I'm happy not to play against it, uh, you know? Um, I will confirm that after my week one match, I have made a trade, and I'll talk about that at the end of my week one match, um, which should be coming out not too long after this video. But yeah, this is um, how my team stands. So basically, in the first... And just like the first section of picks, so many Pokemon that I wanted to go on. Obviously Heatran. Um, if you guys remember, I just love Heatran. I wouldn't have minded trying it back when Heatran just was even better than it is now. As difficult as that is to believe. Um, Heatran is... He's pretty good. Um, I'm just gonna... Yeah, so first overall, like Jirachi, Infernape, Heatran, Scizor, Raikou, Gengar, Lucario, Tyranitar, Metagross, and Zapdos are gone. Um, I'd really wanted Lucario as well. I really wanted Heatran, I really wanted Lucario. Um, I really wanted Scizor. 
all of which are steel types, you may notice. Uh, so I wound up going with Mammoth Swine. Uh, and I decided against picking more tier ones. May not have been the right choice, but uh, it was a choice that I made. Um, so I just have Mammoth Swine as my tier one. Mammoth Swine in this generation does not get Ice Punch because she doesn't get Ice Punch in any generation. So its um, stab is Avalanche, Ice Fang, uh, Ice Shard, and Ice Skull Spear. No Ice Skull Crash either because it doesn't exist yet. Uh, Knockoff is also significantly reduced in power, but it's got the same utility. I, I know some other people in their week one matches, which have happened earlier, have used knockoff to some decent effect. But yeah, basically, strong boy, earthquake, he's got priority in ice shard, he's got that nice base 80 speed with that 130 special attack. Um, I believe every single Pokemon with higher... no, you know, in gen 4, the, there's only one ground type with higher attack, which is legal in this, which is Rhyperior. Um, if I pull down to Rhyperior, not in the right tier. If I pull down to Rhyperior, 140 attack, which is pretty strong. Um, I think that's strongly Garchomp, maybe. I don't remember off the top of my head if Garchomp's 135 for 140. But yeah, it's like those guys and Groudon are the only ground types with higher attack in this generation than my boy Mamoswine. So, very, very strong Earthquake user. Um, so it generally means that I have a pretty good matchup against a lot of steel types, and steel's broken in this generation because this is back when it still resisted Ghost and Dark, so that's pretty nice. Um, decent Stealth Rock user, Oblivious and Snowcloak. Um, technically I have Snowcloak Synergy with Frostlass, though I don't have a Hail Setter in this gen. Um, weather by abilities, so uh, it is endless, so if you just click hail it's five turns and I think you can use I think the rocks exist in this yeah yeah the, the damp like the weather rocks exist in this generation um, and the original was planning to get Roserade but the picker directly after me was the wheel and they took Roserade so I didn't get Roserade um, so I wound up in my second pick with Empoleon um, poorly on this gen, uh, no, no Defiant, which is a shame, but it's still got the Agility Sword Stance, if that is a meme I want to go with. It's got Surf, which is base 95 power. Hidden Power is a base 70 in this generation, which is very strong. So I've got Grass Knot, I've got Flash Cannon, I don't have Iron Head, but I think I still have Steel Wing in this gen. It's just not very good. Yeah. The inaccurate, the inaccuracy just sucks. Um... Yeah, it's got a decent bit of offensive coverage, um, as well as utility and knockoff. It's got Stealth Rock. Defog is, this is before the Defog buff, so it only, yeah, it only clears the target side hazards, but it always did that. A lot, not a lot of people know that. We always cleared the screens and hazards on the opponent's side. Um, but I still think it'll be pretty good. It's, I believe it is OU in this gen. Yeah, it is OU, for a reason. The main reason is that there aren't very many good electric types, but shh. Um, and yeah, this one's got really nice, um, really versatile stats. You can basically invest in whatever you want it to and have it call, come to good effect. I really like mons like this. A uh, similar mod in terms of stat distribution is Seismitoad, who I really like. Um, and a bulky water steel type is just insane. Like this, uh, in this generation, I think it resists most every type. Um, because there are 18 types, and this resists normal, bug, uh, water, fi um, sorry, not for flying, dragon, it's immune to poison, rest only another four, and I'm being dumb. Brain. Uh, it resists dark and ghost in this generation. And then it would only need one more resist to resist half, but it, it resists steel four times. I think it might have another resist that I'm just not remembering. Well, one of them is immunity, but like having positive type matchup against basically every offensive move. Oh yeah, ice is the other big resist. Um, yeah, so resists half the types. Oh, there's only 17 types this gen because fairy doesn't even exist yet. I am doing really. Yeah, um, Empoleon, pretty good. Stealth Rocker, Stealth Rocker, pretty solid. Uh, and then the next pick I went for in terms of draft order was actually Kabutops. 
uh, Nakabutops is a pretty chill dude. Um, rapid spin this generation is very strong because you know defog doesn't doesn't defog yet. Um, so I got a rapid spinner, very consistent rapid spinner. He's got 115 base attack, 105 base defense, and in Gen 4, um, Kabutops was actually considered to have a fairly decent defensive typing for um, Gen 4 UU. Obviously, it doesn't resist a few types, which are pretty strong. Um, sorry, a few types, as in Earthquake, specifically. It doesn't resist Dark, it doesn't resist Alakazam, um, which is unfortunate for it. But the Flying Resist, the Normal Resist, the Fire Resist times 4, um, and the Ice Resist are all really good in this generation. Um, so I think that uh, there, there were a lot of mons that it historically was able to spin on, and it was good because it had the ability to challenge and threaten um, ghost types. Most ghost types couldn't switch into it. Like, if you have a choice band or a life orb set, and life orb does exist this generation, like, if you get a sword dance off, and you just slam through mons using the um, waterfall, like, waterfall stone edge, uh, it's very difficult for basically all the ghost types because they're generally extremely frail. Um, if you that's not what I was trying to do. Uh, if you set rain, then in rain with a life orb, this mon kills so many Pokemon. It was so strong. I believe it got damp rock banned from underused. Um, the combination of Kabutops and so it wouldn't be Kingdra because Kingdra's King King not down here. Oh yeah, Kabutops and Ludicolo combined together. Um, I'd hope to get Ludicolo, but it did get sniped. Yeah, the, but the combination of those two together it got Damp Rock banned so that people couldn't just uh, lead like Road or something and then Damp Rock up and then just win. It was very, very offensively strong this generation and the utility of Rapid Spin is also amazing. So I'm looking forward to using that. I've got a few Pokemon which might be able to set rain for it, I don't know. I guess, I guess we'll see how it goes. I'm not sure its defensive utility will be as good in the draft format because Someone with a normal type, say Amber Palm, could obviously just pack Seed Bomb for it, which, while it may not be viable in the ordinary tiers, it, it is um, more viable in the draft format. But I suppose we'll definitely see how it goes. I do expect it to be very strong offensively, though. Um, base 80 speed. Like these two together, just will just break every wall below base 80 speed. It's going to be crazy. And I've got this at just about 85, at 85 as well. Um, Oh no, the next Pokemon I drafted was Cresselia. Um, Cresselia, I was thinking she was pretty bulky. Um, yeah, Levitate, so it's ground immunity. I didn't want a rock weakness. Um, I say as I had, mostly just because my ground type didn't resist rock, I didn't want to have a rock weakness as my main ground immunity, so I didn't get one. Um, Energy Ball, Grass Knot, Ice Beam, Psychic, it's got, you know, it's got the moves. Um, no Psy Shock, no a lot of things. I don't know if this was necessarily the right play. I've got Trick Room support if the matchup merits it, though my team is relatively fast, so I'm not sure that it would. Um, and Lunar Dance support is always nice. Moonlight, and it, like, it, it's Cresselia, people know what it does. Um, yeah, I don't know, I'm not entirely sure about this pick now. It's a very good fighting resist, which I did need, given that my other three Pokemon at the time were weak to fighting. Um, yeah, not necessarily sure it was the best fighting resist I could have picked, though. Uh, and then after that, it came back to me, and I picked up Crobat. Crobat is very fast, he's got Inner Focus, no infiltrator yet, sadly. Um, 130 speed, and then really malleable offensive and defensive stats, so you can run it bulky, you can run it offensive as you like. Uh, Brave Bird, 120 base power is really strong, it still gets a uh, nasty plot this generation, which is very strong. It's got Pursuit, which is really juicy, because everyone knows that poison types are perfect at trapping um, dark, uh, sorry, I said psychic types. But Pursuit, Pursuit's just nice. Um, it's got U-turn. U-turn is a thing this generation. I felt that I should probably get a fairly fast U-turn mon. I really wanted the poison type for the resist to grass, given that I had 
a lot of grass weaknesses at that point and no grass resists. Um, so four times grass resist, four times fighting resist is pretty pretty solid. It's another ground immunity. Um, yeah, that's generally my thoughts. Um, yeah, basically it's good. It's got tailwind support. Uh, Super Fang is just a broken move. Just the ability to take half of someone's HP is always strong. Uh, fast Taunt was the other reason that I wanted it. Uh, I can anti-lead decently well against some teams. Giga Dream breaks a lot of the uh, a lot of the ground types that tend to be common leads because of Defog. Uh, I believe the next Pokemon that I drafted because I drafted these because I was basically a wheel because I was right next to it. Pretty sure the next one I drafted was actually my Magmortar. Which I noticed was in tier 4, and I had meant to move this up, but I hadn't, and it was there. Um, he kind of stronger. It's another Monoran base AD, which I feel is an, a flaw of my draft. Um, is that well, you get 80 to 85, 91. Um, but if you go between 80 and 85, I have 4 Pokemon in that 5 speed area. Which is a bit yikes, but you know, transactions exist and uh, have been made. Well, a transaction has been made. Um, he just gets ridiculous offensive coverage. Um, he's got usable physical attack at 95. Obviously, with when it has dive, he's off. It doesn't look that good. Why does it look like that? Yeah, um, so 95, 125. 125 special attack is really strong. Uh, it's a really good breaker. It's got relatively fast taunt. I believe it gets... No, it does not. No, it does. Yeah, it gets Belly Drum this generation. So if I would need to run Belly Drum Slack, that is an option. Because um, it could absolutely blast through some boys. Um, I don't think Flame Charge exists this generation, though. Uh, but I might be dumb. No, yeah, I don't think Flame Charge exists. So, certainly. Um, but yeah, it's just a really strong breaker. For the team, um, it's an option for a choice scarf user if I need one. Just, just pretty offensive. Uh, then my next draft pick was Frostlass. Uh, Frostlass is 110 base speed. So this is my next fastest one between that and Crobat. Unfortunately, I do have a speed gap there, but I couldn't really figure out a way to avoid that well, unfortunately. Um, my speeds generally are really, really mid heavy and Crobat in this draft. Like, I don't have anything which is super slow. I've got Empoleon at 60 is my slowest. And then my fastest is Crobat, but between that, I've got Frostlass. So that's like 50 speed, in which the rest of my Pokemon are. And Crobat and Frostlass is like a decent junk faster. Most of my mons are between 80 and 95, um, which is, is pretty bad. But, you know, transactions. Transactions transact. Um, doesn't really help that much, I don't know. But spikes, spikes are broken this generation, spikes broken every generation. I actually think they're about as good as Stealth Rock. Um, mostly because the Pokemon which are hardest to break down are Steels and Ground types because they don't have a lot of type weaknesses. And having spikes uh, is really good at wearing them down, especially when you've got one, two, three. Um, you combine that with rocks, it can just really wear down an opposing team. Um, this has got fast destiny bond. Uh, I've, I can run like a disable set snow cloak So if you can technically if I was like running manual hail I could put that but generally it's just fast. It's got okay coverage It's got good priority in physical priority off of the base 80 attack stat, which is the same as a special attack stat um, Neither which is great. It's got usable bulk at 70 70 70 but I would say suboptimal. I generally consider when you hit over 80 and those stats, it's better. It's pretty good. Like, you've got that 85, 80, 80 here is great. That 84, 88, 101 is blessed. I mean, obviously, this is just chonky. Um, his 110, 80 is really good. And then he's got, eh, spadef. But, it, it, like, it's it's got natural bulk. This does not have natural bulk. It's got natural fizz death, though. Um, next Pokemon I drafted was Magneton. This was not a good pick. It's so bad. And it makes me sad. Uh, Volt Switch doesn't exist. It is Magnapul. Yeah, sturdy. 
Study does not do this. That is a lie. Study does not do that this generation. Um, that is its mechanic and next generation, I believe, generation 5. Um, Eviolite does not exist. Basically, I have 120 base special attack and 70 base speed to just try and trap Pokemon with. You know which Pokemon that you can like effectively trap with that? Like basically Scizor and nothing else. Um, the Pokemon, like maybe Jirachi, but Jirachi can just run Earthquake. Uh, it's not Heatran, Heatran's faster. Um, I mean, Empoleon, but I have Empoleon. Uh, like if we just go types Steel. Like, like, uh, yeah, but he can just earthquake me. He can earthquake me. He can earthquake. Um, well, he, they, they get these two get trapped. But Skarmory is technically a speed tie, which is just memes. Um, Mobile, no one drafted. Uh, Agron, I guess you can like hidden power ground. I guess that's not awful. They'll probably be running. Does that not exist yet? Okay, witness policy does not exist, which is good. The, the plus side is that hidden power is base 70, so it's a lot stronger this generation. Uh, the downside is just slow. Doesn't get the standard utility of Volt Switch. And it doesn't have analytics, so I can't run the offensive scary sets. But I guess, I guess that's just how it be. Um, I think it's fine. I do sincerely consider trading it, but there's honestly not much else in tier 3 um, that I would want. It's another Dark Steel Resist. Oh, sorry, Dark uh, dark Ghost Resist. It's good Steel Resist, though, for my Mamoswine and my Frostlass. Not that Mamoswine tends to need to steal answers, but it's not bad. Um, I'm just not entirely sure which Pokemon it benefits. My team does not have the worst matchup against Steel types. Uh, then my last two Pokemon, Drapion and Chitot. Chitot, I literally just drafted 91 speed. I can confuse people. Eh? It's pre the. I should not have drafted Chitot. Chat is only base 60. And it's only a 30% chance, 31% chance to confuse the target. It's Gen 5 where it gets 100% chance and a higher base power. It's not Boom Burst either. Um, really, I just picked it because it was kind of fast and it got Rain Dance. If I wanted to have like a Rain Lead for Kabutops. Um, Should have gone Fear. I would have gone Dodrio, but Dodrio doesn't get Rain Dance. Encore is not awful, um, so it can anti lead decently well. After a nasty plot, even with the. Uh, low base power, it's still not going to be bad, right? Like, it's got okay coverage. Um, there's no air slash, which is sad. It's got air cutter. Um, like, after an RC plot, it can break through a team. I do feel that it is part of my problems with speed tiers, because again, the other Pokemon that aren't in the 80 to 95 area are Empoleon, Crobat, and Frostlass. I got Drapion, who I got a bit before, um, immune to crits can crit, which is not bad. Uh, meaty 110 base defense, 70 75 split F is okay. Um, hidden power ground, like its only weakness is ground, which means that it is defensively usable. It's a poison type, which means it has access to black sludge, which is nice. Uh, earthquake is strong. Um, sp attack isn't really that usable. Physical attack honestly isn't amazing either, but it's it's usable. Um, sword stance, if I need to, it's another fast taunt user. It's got toxic spikes, which was a pretty big concern because my other poison type is not grounded. Um, I wanted it mostly just so that I could have like a Pokemon I can put a choice band on and play pursuit. Um, so that is my draft. I think it's pretty decent. I think it can win. Uh, Whirlwind support is nice as well. It's got a lot of coverage. Just a shame most of it's pretty crap, like the fangs instead of the elemental punches. Um, but you know, you get Sniper and Night Slash. It's not terrible. Does it get Acupressure this gen? It does. Never mind, it's broken. Just, just gonna sweep with Acupressure. It's all good. Uh, this, should, this should be fun. Uh, I think Drapion is fine. 
I was deciding between Drapion and Absol dominantly. Um, the difference is Absol a little bit stronger. Just, just a little bit stronger, but it's also slower and it's got significantly less bulk. I think that's yeah, less in all three defensive stats. Um, Absol technically has better coverage because it has fighting coverage and Drapion doesn't and steel types resist or are neutral to dark moves now. Um, we've got Firefang though, that's, that's okay. It's just a significantly weaker but faster version. Um, it should be fine. I think Drapion can put in work. I think it's a pretty decent lead option in a decent number of matchups just because it can taunt. I believe it does get Rain Dance as well. I know it does in Gen 7. I use Drapion a lot in Gen 7, but I think it's actually better. Um, well, just boast the steel nerf of Gen 6. Yeah, it's got Rain Dance, so if I need to lead Rain Dance, that is a, an option. Um, if you want to like lead Sunny Day, I have got Torment. That's a good move. Uh, everyone liked when Gator used that move, right? Um, yeah, utility, accuracy. Um, I think it's fine. It's got natural gift if I need to meme. Um, I think a lot of my Pokemon have natural gifts. Yeah. Do you have a natural gift? I think you do. Yeah. I don't think you do. Oh, you do! Okay. Is it physical Cresselia time? It might be. I don't think Kabutops does, because it's Gen 1. Gen 1 mods don't all get natural gift. Oh, no, he does get natural gift. Um, you definitely don't get natural gift, otherwise I would have used it before. No, what the fuck? You do. Is it time for physical Magneton as well? I think it might be. I think it might be, guys. Um, I'm pretty sure you get natural gift. Yeah. If my entire team actually just gets natural gift, then that is pretty nice. You do. You might not. But you do off the same base attack as your special attack. Oh, is it time? Is it time? Um, I just saw that you got natural gift and you get natural. My entire team gets natural gift. That's it. Six owed. I have one. Oh yeah, it also gets mirror move, but that's not a Z anymore. That's only for like if someone has hurricane and I don't. <laughs> Why is your dot so bad? But yeah, um, I might also drop to tot. I have not dropped your dot. I dropped one of my mid tier mons, T series T threes. Um, what the, what do I do? I have a dot for. I, I might sincerely drop it for Fero. Just if we scroll super far down, and get to NU. Fero base hundred speed. This kind of helps my speed tiers. Uh, 90, 90 attack. I think Fury gets Sword Stance. It might not. It doesn't have very good coverage. It does not get Sword Stance, but it does get Tailwind support, gets U-Turn, and I can, like... I don't know. I, I, I don't know if it's even gonna be worth it, because I'm not sure I bring either Pokemon ever. Um, yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys are hyped for the season. Gen 4 is a really interesting meta, especially I think it's relatively unexplored in the Draft League. I am, at the very least, I'm not aware of another draft, um, which has been in Gen 4, though I'd be surprised if I was, like, the first ever person to say, oh, we should do a Gen 4 base draft. Um, it's going to be Swiss, because the season's going to be relatively short, um, so it's going to have a lot more interesting matchups, because the matchups will be based on success, so that means the further on you get into the season, the more balanced the matchup should be, effectively. Um, yeah, I hope you guys are hyped and excited. Uh, and just just do the good boy things. Um, yeah, sorry, thanks for watching. <laughs> this has been a hard trick. Uh, peace.